Uh, it is Lee Bar Lev, Schleider. Don't forget the Schleider part. This is Tikkun Olam, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Tikkun Olam. I say this wrong all the time. Tikkun Olam. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lee Barlev Schleider. I am the research manager at Tikkun Olam, the first and largest medical cannabis supplier in Israel. And I'm a PhD student. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the Clinical Research Center at Soroka Medical Center under the supervisor of my two professors, Professor Victor Novak and Professor Rafael Mishulam. I want to thank the conference organizers for uh, inviting me today. It's a great honor to be here. I will share with you today the epidemiological characteristics of the medical cannabis patients and the um, safety and efficacy of the, of the treatment. In recent years, there has been an increasing use of medical products based on cannabis. As more countries legalize the use of medical cannabis, it is essential to accumulate scientific data on the safety and effectiveness on the treatment of the treatment. Therefore, the aim of this study was to evaluate the short and long-term outcomes of the treatment and to characterize the patient's population. Uh, today, there are about 27,000 medical cannabis patients, medical cannabis active patients in Israel. 2,000 of them received treatment at Tikkun Olam. In this study, we included all patients, all Tikkun Olam patients who received a medical cannabis license in one year between March 2015 and February 2016. In the routine treatment process, the patient first undergo a 35 minutes guidance session conducted by a trained nurse. The patients fill in a medical questionnaire and depending on the um, medical characteristics of the patients, the nurse advises on the treatment plan. The preferred cannabis strain, all strains out of Tikkun Olam 16 available strains that differ in the active compounds concentration, the method of administration, and starting dose and titration. At one month, and again, at six months after beginning the treatment, the patient undergo a telephone interview aimed at assessing change in symptoms intensity and side effects. The study was approved by the Institutional Review Board at the Soroka University Medical Center, and the analysis was completed under the supervision of the Clinical Research Center in Soroka. During the recruitment period, 2,850 patients received license at Tikkun Olam. 143 patients died before starting the treatment. 117 received the license but refused to begin the treatment. And the rest, 2,590 patients, initiated the treatment. Of them, 2,191 patients answered our questionnaire. The most frequent indications were cancer, pain, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Table one shows demographic characteristics of our patients. Mean age was 56 years, the gender distribution is uh, equal, male and female, 51% male. 24% uh, of the patients are employed, 52% are driving a car. The median number of different medications per day was four, and 31% of the patients reported uh, on previous experience with cannabis. 
Each patient received the cannabis license under one indication, but most of them suffer from more than one medical condition. The next table shows the prevalence of the comorbidities with the disease duration. 60% of the, pa the patients suffer from cancer, 13 from hypertension, and 10% suffer from diabetes. The median disease duration was four years. The next table showed the uh, symptoms, the main symptoms reported. 80% of the patients reported suffering from pain. The median pain intensity was eight on a scale of zero, no pain, to 10, worst pain imaginable. Apart from pain, the main symptoms requiring therapy were sleep problems, weakness and fatigue, and digestion problems. The, the license from the Ministry of Health specified the amount, the number of grams per month that the uh, patients can purchase. Most of the patients have a license to purchase 20 or 30 grams per month, sorry, and most of the patients have a license to purchase a combination of oil and influences. After one month of treatment, 169 patients died, 16 stopped the treatment, nine switched to a different cannabis supplier, and the rest, 2,396 patients, continued in an ongoing treatment. At the second follow-up, after six months of treatment, another 335 patients died, 300 stopped the treatment, 34 switched to a different cannabis supplier, and the rest, 1,727 patients, um, were in an ongoing treatment. Of them, 1,180 patients responded to our, to our follow-up questionnaire. We asked them to evaluate the effect of the treatment on their condition. 55.5% reported on significant improvement, 33.2% reported on moderate improvement, and 8.6% only on slight improvement. 2.6% of the patients reported no change in their medical condition, and 0.1% experienced a deterioration in their medical <coughs> condition. A total of 97.3% of the active patients that answered the questionnaire reported on improvement. Uh, we asked the patients to evaluate their pain intensity before the treatment and again after six months of treatment. The blue columns represent uh, the distribution of the uh, answers before the treatment and the red columns after six months of cannabis uh, treatment, you can see that 61% of the patients reported eight, nine, or 10, as describes the 10 intensity before the treatment. Only 6% reported it after six months of treatment. We asked the same questions about quality of life before the treatment and again after six months of treatment. Before the treatment, only 16% of the patients reported on good quality of life, good or very good, and 57% of the patients reported it, um, reported good quality of life after six months. So it's effective, but what about safety? 261 patients reported on 405 side effects. The most common side effects were dizziness, dry mouth, psychoactive effect, nausea, sleepiness, increased appetite, and weakness. The fact 
that 22.7% of the total patients that received cannabis license at Tikkun Olam died within the first six months of the treatment tells us something about the severity line in which the medical cannabis is being recommended. The patients uh, that receive the cannabis license are aged from a few months to 98 years, with 37% uh, of the patient over the age of 65. Most of the patients suffer from cancer. It seems that the treatment is both effective uh, and safe, however, the treatment is not working for everyone. 12% of, of the patients stop the treatment, and 2.7% of the patients are not responding to the treatment. In conclusion, this is the largest study describing uh, the um, um, beneficial effect and the side effects of the medical cannabis patients in Israel. It seems that in Israel, most of the cannabis licenses are given to patients with severe conditions. Establishing a national investigation program using objective measures to elucidate the, the safety and effectiveness of the treatment is imperative. Thank you very much. All right. Tikkun Olam.